Greetings in the name of Jesus this morning. Again, I say thank you for tuning in today. The title of our devotion today is Fear Not. Our text will come from 1 Kings 17 and verse 13. And it reads, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. Elijah, the prophet of God, had prayed that God would stop the rain and the dew upon Israel, and God stopped the rain and the dew. Because of this, there was a great famine in the land of Israel. God had commanded Elijah to go to a widow in Zarephath, where he would be sustained throughout the famine. Elijah met the widow as she was gathering sticks to go and prepare the final meal for her and her son. Then she expected them both to die, for there was no more food for them. Elijah asked the widow to get him a drink of water to bring him a morsel of bread. The widow replied, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little cruise, a little oil in a cruise, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. That's in verse 12. Elijah said, Fear not, but make me a therefore a little cake first. That's in verse 13. For God said, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. That's in verse 14. The words fear not are recorded in God's written word 17 times. Each time it was used when human frailty had succumbed to an inherent characteristic of the flesh. That is fear of the unknown. Webster says that fear as a general term implies great anxiety and usually loss of courage. It is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by expectation or awareness of danger. Synonyms would be dread, fright, and panic. When God's people are faced with a situation that requires supernatural intervention to overcome, fear can and often does overcome them. Fear can cause a child of God to doubt God's word and God's power to overcome the situation. If fear is not checked by fleeing to God and resting in his promises, then fright and panic can take control. When this happens, the child of God starts running in the wisdom of the flesh and not in the spirit. The child of God then can and will do things and say things that bring about defeat and destruction when he walks in fear. Thank God. He knows the weakness of our flesh. Therefore, he has given us, that is the born again believer, faith, our Christ living in us. Paul writes in Galatians 2 and verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. God has given us his Holy Spirit to give us understanding and wisdom of the problem we face and has given us power by his Spirit to perform uh, in our adversity. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, Solomon writes, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The widow and her son were faced with one meal and then death. But here Elijah, the prophet of God, telling her to feed him first. Fear said, no, why feed him and bring death to me and my son sooner? But faith says, listen to and follow the word of God. Faith told her to believe in God. Don't look at the situation, but look to God for salvation. The secret is, do you have faith living in you? Do you take heed how you hear this word of God? Meditate on God's promises. Trust God rather than the outward appearance. Then obey God's word. Fear not. Stand still. Wait on the Lord. Move at his command. Don't be a hearer only, but a doer of God's word. And ye shall have success 
ye shall have victory. It is recorded in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, these words, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that, the, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Child of God, I challenge you today to not look at your enemy, your adversary, your valley, your trial, but listen to God's word. Fear not. Look up the references in, in his word of the phrase fear not and follow his instructions and believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The apostle Paul writes in Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Therefore the child of God has the victory living within him. The secret is believe God. Place your feet into the Jordan River and see God part the waters for you. The Apostle Paul defines faith in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John 5, 4 and 5, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the victory. And those in Christ then have overcome the world in Christ Jesus. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. In Christ, in his blood atonement, in his victory, we have victory. Fear not, for Christ was raised from the grave. Romans 1 and 4 said, declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, if you be in Christ, you have his power. Fear not, call on him, believe in his word and walk by faith and you will triumph over your situation with supernatural power of God. In 1 Kings 17 and 15, And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this day for this devotion. We ask God that you lead us in a plain path. Lord, as David prayed, Psalm 139, 23, Lord, search my heart and know me. Try my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. God, deal with our doubts. Fear not. Help us, Lord, to rest in you, who you are, that you are unchangeable, that what you have spoken will come about. Your promises are real and true to all believers. You said you'd never leave us or forsake us. You also said that you would make a way of escape for us in any and every trial or temptation that comes upon us, that you will make a way of escape for us. Help us, Lord, to be still and listen to you. Read your word and therefore be built up in the knowledge of God knowing that you will take us all the way, that you will sustain us, that you are our protection. You are the power of God living in us. You, God, will take us to the end of this journey. Thank you, God, for your power, your protection, your provision, all that we have in you. Calm our fears today. Be with your people Encourage them today, and whatever they face, let them look at these examples, especially the one we have before us with a widow woman that had one meal left for she and her son, 
and then they would die. But she listened to the man of God and believed the word that he spoke. Father, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.